All right, everybody, welcome back. We're at Willow Creek Archery in Temecula, and today we are going to be shooting some carbon bows. We got flagship bows from Hoyt, PSE, and Bowtech. We're gonna put them to the test and see which one comes out on top. I already have all the bows set up, save us some time. So that helps. Let's get in here and let's start shooting the bows. We're gonna do one at a time and uh, do each thing for each bow, and then at the end we'll give them a rating. All right, first up the bat, we got the Hoyt RX-7 Ultra. And to describe or go over some of the key features that changed from, what was last year, the RX-5? RX-5. So RX-5 to RX-7, what, what's changed and what's made this thing better? Well, the biggest change was the riser design. So no more tubes, it's more of a rectangular shape, so it's more streamlined. Still all carbon, but it's more in line. You don't have the tubes wrapping around okay. like on the RX-5. I like that. Okay. It's got the built-in Picatinny rail. The RX-5 we had to bolt it on, take off the side plate. This is built in. Has the dovetail feature here, so you can put the new uh, integrate. QAD integrate rest on there. Uh, they did change on the RX-7 to the binary system, so no more cam and a half. So that was a big, big change. After about nine and a half years of uh, cam and a half, they went to the binary. Then they did a few extra things to silence the bow. Uh, they added the dampeners here on the side. The first version had it on both sides and they found that just the side here worked the best, so that's what they did. But yeah, it's uh, this is probably the, one of the smoothest drawing bows in the whole shop. Well, it looks like it. Look how smooth that Yeah, you don't feel it when you pull back and you don't See feel this? it on the shot. That looks like a smooth draw right there. What's the axle to axle on this bow? This the bow is the Ultra, is the 34 inches axle to axle. Okay. That's another reason it makes it super smooth. Yeah. All right, next one up, we got the PSE Mach 34. So this is one everybody's been waiting for because they've always had 32 inch bows and everybody wanted a longer one to compete with the Hoyt Ultra. So this is 34 inches axle also. Now it comes with three versions of cams, which is kind of cool on this one. You have the S2, the E2, and the EC2. So the EC is gonna be your smoother draw and the S2 and E2 are gonna be the speed ones. Uh, the E2 goes a longer draw than the S2, uh, but it's still a real smooth shooting bow, really light, uh, real fast. You guys already know how I feel about the S2 cams. Now this one has, right here for the rest, it has a built, or not a built in, but a bolted on dovetail. So you can use like a QAD integrated rest, or you can actually use, there's a special bracket from Hamski. You can integrate the Hamski rest on this bow without the side plate. It's one of the few bows that you can do that. We did that with my Fortis, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. So you can do that with the PSC bows. And also, it does have the newer cam, so they are the wider system with the Easy 220 shim, shim kit. Uh, so that's obviously going to be a new feature going forward until until they change their design and come up with something different. But for for now, in the near future, uh, that's their that's their cam shim system that you're going to get with all the bows. Which is nice. You can shim it in about 45 seconds. All right. So the brace height of this, uh, I believe it's six and three quarters, right? Six and three quarters. And then axle to axle, 34. obviously. Mach 34. 34 axle to axle. Last but not least, we got Bowtex Carbon, their first carbon bow. Is carbon it the first one. carbon bow? Yeah, it's first one. It's first called carbon one. Carbon one. Carbon one 30 inch axle to axle. Okay. It has the deadlock uh, shim system on there, like all their bows do. Six and five eighths brace height. It's a short bow. Yeah, it's 30 inches. It's kind of goofy looking. I'm not a fan of all that, but I am curious to see. The cams do look like they're going to be pretty smooth. To yeah, draw. and then they put their dampener in between right here, so that gives it a real dead feeling too. Okay, yeah, there's really nothing to say the, as far as features go, what this one is compared to the last model because this is their first one. So uh, going into it with no expectations, uh, I'm just gonna give it give it a few shots and see how see how it ranks in our in our scoring. And system. like all the other bows, it also has the dovetail for the integrated rest mount on there. But no Picatinny, no. so it's just your common side mount, same as the PSC. First one at the bat, we got the Hoyt RX7 Ultra. Let's go give this one a shot. All right, so we'll be doing our testing with uh, some Rip TKO 300s here. We'll do three three arrows per bow, just to get a, a good feel. These weigh 412 grains, which is kind of where we average out our hunting arrows, anywhere from 410 to kind of 450. 
I think that's probably the, the perfect size, perfect weight arrow. So our scale is as follows. We're going to do the draw cycle, how the draw cycle feels, uh, how the bow feels in your hand, the speed of the bow with these hunting arrows at 412, and just our overall impression of what we think uh, the bow looks, how it feels, how it shoots, kind of give it an overall score. First shot, um, as expected, the bow is super dead. Uh, it's typical for carbon bows. There's like zero recoil. Uh, we're shooting this bow bare too, so there's nothing on it to help dampen it uh, with sights, uh, rest, better rest, uh, <clears throat> stabilizer, quiver. All that stuff's gonna help deaden it too. But shooting it as is with nothing on it, um, it's actually really nice. The draw cycle, I'm not used to shooting this cam. Obviously, I'm used to shooting the PSE cam, so um, I think the three arrows will kind of help, but the first time drawing back is a little rough. It is set at, set at 70 pounds. Yeah, 70 pounds. Not a fan of the draw. But the shot is really, really nice. Dude, that bow is quiet, dude. It's super quiet. And again, there's nothing on it that having more stuff on there will help quiet it down. The draw is getting easier though, so I'm sure with about 20 arrows, you can get this thing to come back real smooth. That's really nice. Let's go get those arrows. Uh, I want to shoot one through the chrono. See where it is, and then uh, I think then we'll get on the PSE. Let's set it up. So we're gonna shoot two two arrows to the chrono to verify the speed. If it's uh, if the speeds are off by more than two feet per second, we'll just split it, average it out. Your shot number one, two eighty one, two eighty. We'll call it two eighty one. Something I forgot to mention before, uh, all these bows were preset for us at 28 and a half. So 28 and a half, 70 pounds, 412 grain arrow, in case you're wondering. First shot with the PSE, first impression. Oh my God. I don't like those cans. First impression, um, very dead in the hand. Probably a little bit more than the Hoyt, surprisingly. It's, I think, I think it's just as quiet, what do you think? Because it's pretty quiet. And again, that's with nothing on it except the Whisker Biscuit. Um, the, the S2 cams, <laughs> I'm a PSC guy. I had one bowl with those cams, no more. If you guys haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. We appreciate all the support. And be sure to like this video. Click that like button. Oh, yeah, no recoil, no vibration. Super dead in the hand. Super light too. I think this is the lightest one of all three. Which makes sense because there's like nothing to it. It's a, it's a single tube. But I don't like the cams. Oh god. It shoots great. It's a great shooting bow. Um, but look at the see the cam build right there. See that how steep. And severe, how how narrow and, and oval that is. That's where you get that harsh let off and that harsh draw. The bigger, more rounded cams, obviously, going to give you a much smoother draw cycle. All right, All right let's go do two at the chrono now. First, I'm guessing shot. 300 or just a hair over. 
300, huh? 70, 70 pounds, 20 and a half, yeah, 400 so torque arrow. That's cam, yeah, I'm thinking 305. That's two cam. I'm gonna guess 301. <sighs> 295, that's my guess. Dang, 300. All right, one more. Uh, if I didn't say it before, the grip feels nice on this. I like the narrower flat back grips. They seem to fit my hand better. Uh, other than the draw cycle on this, which is pretty extreme because of the cams, uh, the bow does shoot nice. It's very dead in the hand, no vibration, no recoil. It's just right there, it's the very end. It holds real steady in my hand too, which is nice. 299. We'll round it up, round it up to 300. Let's wrap it up. I'm actually looking forward to shooting this. I haven't shot a Bowtech since they, the they, since they hey, I'm talking. I haven't shot a Bowtech since they made the General, which was 10 years or 15 years ago. Yeah, probably 15 years ago was the last time I shot a Bowtech. But I know a lot of people recently that have been switching over to Bowtech and they rave and rant about how good it is. That so, deadlock technology is very nice on the cans. It's so simple. Uh, Just a set screw, move yeah. the cam by turning it. It's From what I, what I hear, it's, it's the easiest and fastest way to shim a cam mm -hmm. on a bow. And I'm a PSE guy, and this is better. They came up with the technology first. First shot with carbon one. And this is their first carbon. It's actually real balanced. What's that? It's real balanced. It doesn't want to tip left or right, which most bows do. Wow. With no help from stabilizer. Yeah, there's nothing. It just. Usually coming up it, it, with nothing on there, you gotta have to manipulate it, but I don't think I've ever had a bow that does that. Much smoother. The grip feels nice. Dude, that thing was quiet too. Yeah, super quiet. The draw was super smooth too. That was right on the scale of that Hoyt as far as quietness. Yeah, I think um, the Hoyt in this probably tied for, for sound and PSE is a close close second. Yeah, not too much louder. The, the draw is, is night and day though. Smooth? Oh yeah. Doesn't it have just a little, just a little hump right there. Not bad. Sits real steady. No recoil, no vibration. It's good for a carbon bow. They shouldn't Is have any. The same all three bows I want to say the the follow through. Yeah, the the recoil non-existent, no vibration. The only thing that. That the bows have different, I would say, is the just the mass weight, the draw cycle, which obviously I'm not. Well, a little bit extra weight kind of helps hold the bow still. Really good. I think for carbon bows, I'm uh, I'm like tied right now for Hoyt and Bowtech for top carbon bows. Curious to see what it's going to shoot. Arrow know, speed. Bowtech. Carbonal. So we know who's and everything. 279. Slowest one so far. Duplicate. Look at that group. That does make sense because the more comfortable of a bow, you're not going to get as much speed. All right, final assessment time. We got the bows lined up in the order that we shot them. Uh, first up for the Hoyt RX-7 Ultra. I want to go over the draw cycle. It's a super smooth draw. Obviously with the larger cam body, makes the draw cycle a lot easier, a lot better. Um, 
the, the shot felt great, super dead in the hand, no vibration. The PSE Mach 34, that one, I'm not a big fan of S2 cams, like you guys probably already know. It's, it's a pretty aggressive cam. It's more for speed than it is for comfort. Uh, that kind of resonated when we did the chronograph testing. And then the, the Botec Carbon 1, again, that one was probably just as smooth, if not smoother, than the Hoyt. For whatever reason, the, just the cam design makes it really nice, and it felt great in the hand. It was actually well balanced for not having any accessories on it. And uh, the, the shot felt great, no vibration, super solid. So the Hoyt, I'd probably give that one four out of five, two out of five for the PSC, and a four out of five for the Botec. Uh, next up, we'll do the, the speed test. Obviously, with the more aggressive cams, you're gonna get a faster bow, more comfortable bows. You're gonna get a slower bow, and that held true with these ones. We shot the uh, RX-7. I think it came out to 281, 280, right around there, which is a good speed, good hunting speed. The PSE Mach 34, we knew it was gonna be faster just because it had the faster cams on there. That one was right at 300, which is, which is really, really fast for that type of bow. Uh, and if you're into the speed thing, I, I'm kind of used to it. I like shooting a little faster bow. It helps you make up on bad judge targets. And uh, Carbon 1 came in at 279. So as far as speed, nothing really beat the Mach 34. That one gets uh, 5 out of 5. Anything in the 300s, that's tops in my book. The Hoyt, I'd say for being what it is, probably a 3 out of 5. And then the, the Carbon 1, 3 out of 5 as well. And then just uh, overall impressions. For, for what they are, you're getting a carbon bow, you know, the, the, we're not gonna really go over the price range because they're all about the same, they're all in the $1,700, $1,800 range. But what I mainly look for in a bow is the draw cycle. You need to be able to make a good draw on your bow in the worst conditions. Uh, you don't need to be hurting your shoulder because it's not gonna be comfortable, it's not gonna be fun to shoot. You want something that's enjoyable. Uh, with that being said, my top two between these three is definitely the Hoyt in the Botec. The PSC, maybe if it had the EC2 cam or the E2 cam, it'd be a little bit different story, but for what we have here, we have the S2 cam. I'm just not a big fan of that. Um, overall, I give the Hoyt RX-7 4 out of 5, the PSC 3 out of 5, and the Carbon a 4 out of 5. So basically, to sum it all up, between these three Carbon bows, these top three flagship bows, my choice, shockingly, the Carbon One from Botec. All around, it's a great bow. Well balanced, feels great in the hand. I like the flat back, it's a narrow handle. Uh, the speed, I can live with the speed. I'm sure I can tweak little things, get a little bit faster. Uh, but the draw cycle feel, feels amazing. The shot and the recoil feel great. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> the tuning factor comes into play. This is probably what made me make my decision to go with the Botec, uh, other than the Hoyt. It's, it's probably the best uh, cam shim system on the market. So for Botec's first carbon bow, I have to say kudos to you guys. You did a, a phenomenal job at designing and implementing all of the features that you guys have on your bows into a carbon bow. Um, looking forward to the next few years. They're gonna make improvements, make things better. I'm curious to see what that's gonna be. But make sure if you guys are around any type of pro shop to go in, test shoot all the bows. If you guys want carbons, make sure they set them all up for you, set them all at your draw length. Shoot some arrows behind them. You really need to shoot the bows to know which one you're gonna like. Um, hope, hope this video helps. Hope you guys get a little bit uh, better understanding of the carbon bows, what we like in particular. And uh, appreciate you guys for watching. Catch you on the next one.